back in the house and we're going to talk about recessive autosomal mutations. Um, we'll start first with the word autosomal because I think a lot of you will know what recessive means. Recessive means um, it must have two, one from each parent. But we'll talk about um, autosomal and autosomal is not really what it means, it's what it doesn't mean. Um, autosomal is every gene that is inherited by a cockatiel that is not um, sex linked. So every animal, when you have an animal that's male or female, they'll inherit a sex linked chromosome. Um, they'll inherit one from their parent uh, on one side and one from the parent on the other side and they'll come together and those sex linked chromosomes will determine whether they're male or female. And along with those um, determinations of male or female are also some color mutations in cockatiels um, that follow those um, X chromosomes over and um, determine whether they're male or female. But on a typical um, autosomal mutation, you'll have recessive and dominant. So um, recessive mutations would be your white phase, phthalos, recessive silvers, pides, um, your dominant would be dominant silvers, dominant yellow cheeks, and as you can see, we've kind of put dominant in front of them to stress that they are dominantly inherited, which we'll go over in another uh, video after this one about the dominant autosomal recessive. But today we're going to work on just the autosomal recessive mutations. So um, don't get scared, we're going to do a Punnett square, and I'm sure some of you guys have seen this, and um, if you could get a piece of paper and want to go along with me, just pause the computer now and or your, the video now and we will um, go through these together. The autosomal recessive is the simplest of all of them and um, we'll just go through uh, two or three um, Punnett squares and show you how it's done. So for white face, we have the white face gene, which is a small w. And there's one from each parent, so we'll put two small w's, one from the male and one from the female. So visually, it has to have one from each in order to be visual. But then we have a split white face, which means it got a normal gene from one of its parents, a non-white face, but from another parent who was probably visual or maybe carried a split over, we'll um, discuss that later, uh, they got a white face gene. So although it's not visually, a white face. It carries the white face gene. For here, we have just make square, make a little square around it, and we'll write each of the parents um, on the um, outer edges, outer columns of this square. So we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do a normal split white face right there. So that's normal split white face. Doesn't matter if it's head or cock because we're not dealing with sex linked chromosomes. And we have a visual parent. So that would be if you know that the father was a white face and you know for sure that the mother was a white face. And what we want to do, uh, a split white face. And what we want to do is, is kind of multiply these columns together. So for this column right here, the square, it's this column, which is a white face. And we want to put this column over here as a normal. Normal is also in this column and if you multiply this and this you'll get white face. So then here we have this column and this column down make this one and we have this and this make this. And this is a basic probability so we have four blocks and two of them are normal split white faces. So for this one, we get 50% of all the babies that are produced out of 100, you know, a coin toss up in the air. It could be, you know, 10 in, in two clutches or a white face or uh, they're all not white face. Um, it's pretty rare, but it does happen. So 50% will be split and 50% over here, excuse me will be visual. So very easy. We are going to, um, hold on just a second, 
I'm gonna get a another scenario. Come back. Um, uh, say you want to know, and it's just a little bit e harder. You have two normal white faces, um, and you want to know um, what you'll get with two white faces put together. Um, this should be fairly easy for you to figure out. Because when we put white face visual here and white face visual here, there is a hundred percent visual white face. So if you put two white faces together and you find a normal cockatiel, um, you might want to check to see who the female cockatiel was uh, with before she went with this one because it's, it's impossible to get a non-normal, a non-white-faced cockatiel from two white faces put together. So, our next um, one is a little bit harder. We want to put a split white face with a split white face. See, it's not that hard to do Punnett squares. And hopefully no one's glazing over by now. Um, but this one's fairly, you know, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's not that bad. So here we have something new crop up. So we have two normals, two, uh, a, a split. This is a split, and this is a white face. So a little bit different. Now we have big N, big N, which means that cockatiel is going to not be split white face. So how do you know the difference between this white uh, uh, normal and this normal? And the answer is, although um, as you get more involved with some of the white face genes, some people may say they can kind of figure out what a split white face looks like. There might be some expression of the white face gene. In general, for now, this cockatiel, this cockatiel, will look exactly the same. So every normal you get out of this mix, whether it's this one, this one, or this one, 75% are gonna be normal. 75%, three out of four, are going to be normals. Of all of the babies, there's gonna be um, a 25%, a 50% chance that one of them's gonna be split. But if you just take these three normals, you'll see two of the three of the normals, um, which is 66%, uh, 0.666, is going to be um, a split. So you'll have to test breed these normals. If you put a split to a split, you'll have to test breed the babies from that to see whether or not they're split white face. And the best way to do that is to put them with a visual white face. But one white face, 25% of the time when you put two splits together, you're going to get a visual white face. So, and that could be, you know, uh, three in the first clutch of four and none in the second clutch of four. You just never know how the probabilities are going to work out, but you're obviously gonna get more normals over time than you will visual white faces. Um, so when you're talking about, say you have um, a white face fallow. So we're going to combine the genes. And I don't like to make really long Punnett squares, especially for beginners. So I do two. And say we have um, a split white face, but this bird is also split fallow. Okay, so a split white face and a split fallow. This is the same bird. And we're going to breed it to a bird that's visually white face and visually fallow. So we're going to get, just like we did the first time, hopefully you can see this. Um, Normal fallow. Let's see. 
So from this, we're going to get 50% white face, 50% fallow. So 50% of the babies are going to be white face, and 50% are going to be fallow. Now you may ask yourself, how do I know um, how many are going to be white face fallow? And it's very easy. You will multiply those two together. So when we do a point, we'll turn this into percentages, but turn it into decimals are, um, you just put the, the little dot in front of it, the decimal. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is 0, 0, 0.025, and we move the decimal over four spots, and we're going to get 20, uh, 0 0.25, which is going to be, how is my already at which is going to be 25% um, um, because 0.25 is 25%. So, excuse me, 25% um, are going to be white face fallow babies. So that's how you, that's how I like to do it. I don't like to draw, you could get into it and like really like make a bunch of different and you know cross them over three or four times and have this big Punnett square but I just like to take two of them and then multiply them down and especially when you're only dealing with um, autosomal recessive mutations in the mix and you just multiply the past probabilities just like you multiplied here to get these individuals and you will get the probability of two autosomals put together visually. And the same thing with, we have a 50% chance of split white face, 50% chance of split fallow. So the probability that it's split white face and fallow is 25%. So you know that 75% um, of the chance of the time it's not gonna be split. Um, it'll be split if it's a normal, only be split one. Um, but there'll be that 25% chance when you'll get both of the genes turned out. So, um, that is my quick and easy genetics on um, autosomal recessive mutations. And if you want me to make a, another video talking about anything else of res autosomal recessive mutations, um, put your questions underneath here, underneath the video, in the comments, and either I'll put them all together and make a question answer seminar um, of your questions and answers. And I'll pick, you know, a few of the ones that kind of everyone is asking about. But I have a feeling there won't be many questions about autosomal recessive. Um, when we get the dominant, um, that's when people really start having questions or they start to see um, the, the issues with putting two dominant genes together. So thanks a lot and keep coming back and we'll have more videos for you. Thanks.